Bible Center to hear, to experience, to connect with our dear friend, Nemo. Many of you have heard of him, have read of him. Some of you have seen him perform this week already. We are thrilled to be able to share him with the rest of the Kimas community. And so without further ado, I will give you who you are here to hear from. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. It's a blessing to be here. Namaste in short uh, means just, you know, I bow down to the heart and soul and goodness of each and every one of you. And I have so much faith that you are all doing the same to me and to each other. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, I really want to thank this angel, um, Reverend Dibri, uh, for... space to run and spread um, a message and a way of living that's so important now more than ever for humanity. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> My name is Nemo. Uh, I'm so blessed to be here. My brother Neil here is somewhere back there. Um, he's also here from India. And, uh, we had the blessings to be in QS for a week. Reverend Debris and Denny vacated their house for us so that we could have a place to stay. And, and they were on the streets. They didn't want this one. <laughs> and so what we were doing, we would cook some food and we would bring it to them. And <laughs> the world keeps providing for all of us. And thank you so much for allowing us to, to be here. Um, so, yeah, I'm supposed to be here to share a concert and some music. Empty Hands is a nonprofit that I started about three years ago, four years ago, uh, as, a, as an offering to share a message that I feel like we're all connected to. And so that's what I want to do today. I, 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 when I hear the word concert, I think of like, yeah, like, and we, we're going to do a little of that, I think. But it's more really, I want to share messages that I feel deeply connected to, that I know all of us here feel deeply connected to. And so that's what we're going to do over the next maybe hour and a half or plus or minus. And, um, Another two hours. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, when, when Magnus says two hours, you got to do two hours, okay? So what, what I, the, the format that I would love to do is really a little storytelling and sharing. And then with that, some songs, and maybe even some of us participate in sharing our own um, small stories. So empty hands to me is the simple message that has always resonated with me, I think, more and more as I grow, I think, but this idea that we come onto this planet empty-handed, all of us, and we all leave in the same way, empty-handed. And I love it because there's a cemetery right here, which is a, a, such a humble and beautiful reminder that this is, this is the journey for all of us, for all beings, all creatures. So if we think of that, concept, then it's humbling and it's rewarding in many ways because we lose a lot of the weight that we're putting on ourselves. That everything, this is, this is it, this is it, this is so much, this, the stress, the anxiety, the pressure, the, the greed, the, the self, selfishness, I think as we realize that all of this is temporary, then we also start opening up a little more, you know, following our heart a little more and doing stuff for others a little more. Um, and so that's why, to me, Empty Hands, this message is important. That's why I called um, the music album that I had. That's a gift for all of you. It's on the table there. Uh, Empty Hands, as well as the nonprofit. So um, I wanted to start with this, uh, with this quote by Nelson Henderson, which I think is so powerful. The true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you do not expect to sit. Plant trees to plant seeds for others, and to let it be, and not to worry about what's going to come back for me. What do I get out of it? 
And, you know, like, past almost eight years of my life, I've been living in India, um, working with underprivileged children in the slum communities. And initially when I went there, this whole thought process was, I'm going to help change these kids' lives. I'm going to make it better for them. And it was still so me-centric. And what I realized, one year, two years, as I started working with these children, is that I can't change anything. Actually, what I can change is myself. I can plant seeds for others. And I can water them. But what happens, where they will go, what their life journey will be, is not up to me. So it went from this process of an ego-driven, about what I want, to say no. Here's my intention. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my best. And then whatever happens, happens. It's beautiful. And I think that process is so important. And right around this time that I was going through this journey, my friends in um, Berkeley, California, gifted me an album called Water by an artist named Daniel Neymar. And I, I, I had gone on a musical fa music fast when I moved to India, and I just started listening to Sufi music. And then when I was gifted this album, I was back into English written music, and this was the first time the words were speaking the life I was trying to live. And in Planting Seeds, Daniel's song, he says, Whatever grows will grow. Whatever dies will die. Whatever works will work, and whatever flies will fly. Whatever fails will fail, what's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds of And it hit me hard, and there was this magnificent synchronicity of events that led Daniel and I to connecting. And when I brought 16 children from our slum communities on a tour that we were doing a show on the message of oneness, around the world and we came to LA and Daniel opened our show. First time we met was on stage at a middle school in South Central LA with 16 of my children from India. Daniel opens the show with planting seeds. And from there we become very close brothers, but the song was so deeply imprinted in my heart when I started feeling this itch to write music again. I said, Dan, I need to do like my version of Planting Seeds, which is more of a hip-hop version. And he's like, dude, I've never done hip-hop, let's try it out. <laughs> and Daniel is really well known in, in, you know, as an inspirational singer around America. And he was so humble, so open. And um, we did this song together, and I wanted to share that with you. And more importantly than anything, I just want to share it from the space of, may we all continue to plant seeds for others and for ourselves without really expecting where it has to end up, but with the intention of, hey, I'm planting the seed and putting my heart into this because it's the right thing to do. So I'd love for us to sing along. The words are here, and feel free to sing loud and proud. <laughs> It takes a long time to show in. We plant the seeds, then we look at them now. But the roots are always growing, no matter if I'm there or never around. Thank you. 
taught that what you touch will always turn to gold. But now we're learning when you let it go, it overflows with no credit to take, because no credit is owned. A higher power work the keeper when the seeds are sown, when the seeds are true. There's seeds of gold, but the real gold is joy when life starts to flow. And it doesn't just smile, because now you know I spent a long time running, never knew then, but I know I know now. That the fruits, they always come in, but you can't go around just knocking them down. It takes a long time to show it. We plant the seeds then, we look at them now. But the roots are always growing, no matter if I'm there or never around. All right, we're going to sing this three times together. You guys in? share 
and to not make this a business, but really to try to be of service. And what I've realized over the past four years as this has unfolded is exactly this, is that when we are doing things from a pure space in service, as, as we are here at Unity, something always, it always takes care of itself. You don't have to force anything. And I feel so blessed by the, my noble family all across the world, um, and just knowing that this, this thing constantly reminds me that when we, when we share and offer from a, from a space that we feel connected to, that the noble family around will always manifest it. And my dad has started learning that, oh, that's possible. So I feel very happy that there's even been shifts in my dad's feelings, and it's been a journey for me as well. And the song I wanted to share is called To My People. And I write this as an ode to that spirit of all of us have webs of souls around us that hold us, that give to us, invisible and visible. And to have that community, to have those type of people around us is so powerful, so important. They keep us walking towards the light. For example, my, my friend Neil, I call him my brother because he really is a soul brother of mine. This whole week we've been in Key West, every opportunity he gets, he's like, okay, I'm going to sit for an hour and meditate. He's a, he's a deep practitioner. Uh, it's a big practice in my life as well. But sometimes I feel like I get busy that I feel like I kind of put it, okay, second priority. To have a friend or a brother like that that's constantly committed to the inner work anchors me and gives me a lot of hope. And I feel it's so important for us to have those type of noble friends that keep anchoring us, that keep guiding us towards that light. So I want to share this song called To My People. And I think all of us here are noble friends for each other, for, for one another. Um, what we're providing at the Unity Church I think gives light and hope uh, in terms of the spirit and the message that we all want to live by. So may we all keep guiding each other and helping each other through our practices, through our, way, our ways of living. This song is called To My People, and I would love for us to sing it together. It's very simple. When I put my hands up, we just say, To my people, yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. OK, so here we go, here we go. One, two, three. To my people, yeah. Woo! All right. Yeah. 
And the reason why I'm sharing this story is because there's Reverend Avery, don't miss that. <laughs> Sending her love. The um, reason why I'm sharing this story is because he doesn't know it. His simple hug, the simple loving gestures he made about his sister, it touched me immensely. His small, natural acts of kindness and love hit me really hard and moved me deeply. And I think what's powerful about small acts of love, small acts of kindness, is the ripples are so powerful and you don't even need to know about them. And I just want to share about a young girl today that has, again, touched my heart deeply. Her name is Natalia, and she's right here. Natalia, would you mind coming saying hi to everyone? Yeah. Can you come with your mom? Yeah, come with your sister. That's right here. Yeah. She, she, she's a young, young soul, six years old. She tells her mom, Mom, you know, that we have to be kind to others and not expect anything in return. These are her words verbatim to her mom, and her mom just shared that with me today. And I just feel like that is such an awesome message, dear, that you are gifting all of us. And I just want to thank you for that message that you're clearly sharing with your mom and that you're practicing in your life. So thank you so much. She gifted this mango. Yay. So maybe we'll wait to, till it gets right and we'll share mango pie with everyone. Yeah? <laughs> so I want to share a song with, with all of us called Being Kind. And I really feel what Natalia, what Jonathan, what all of us here are living by in this message of just doing small acts of love one at a time, nothing big. I think huge is the most important way that we can live to help heal our world little by little. So thank you, dears. You guys are angels. Thank you so much. Can I get a hug? Without the love, if it is, it ain't no fun. What we gonna do? 
I want to, uh, um, you know, we just passed this auspicious day on May 14th, and I would love to honor all our wonderful mothers here today. So, can we have all our mothers just humbly stand up? This song I wanted to share is called Ode to Women, and it was inspired by, by all of you, by the women in our, in our world, on our, in our planet, the sacrifices and the strength and the courage that all our mothers have, and that goes into all our women, and just the divine feminine spirit, what that means. When I think of that spirit, to me there's um, compassion, there's courage, there's sacrifice, there's strength. And when my partner and I actually, my, one of my bandmates and I were writing this song, this was quite some years ago, we decided to write it in our native tongues, which is English, as well as Gujarati, because we wanted to make it an ode to our mothers. And it's, it's not a language that we're very fluent in. I've gotten better since I moved to India, but um, at that time, we really wanted to make it a song offering. And, and recently, we just released a music video for it, which I think Reverend Davey showed last week. Um, and as an ode to all the women in the world. So thank you, moms. Um, thank you, daughters, sisters, aunts, grandmas, all of you for being here. Um, this song is called Ode to Women. Hey. All of us want to be here for the world. Exactly. Very true. So, yeah, you can you can catch capture the spirit and the intention of the words that you don't understand. Every time I close my eyes, I dream of visions of beautiful queens that walk by my side. I hold your hand in this time. Put you on the highest pedestal, like the point on the peak of the mountain. Never let it go, mommy. The mental body shut the angel. But God make up the mighty, mighty bump I pray to God that you never run out of my life. Cause I see too many ego men live in Adam and strife. You're the catalyst. Times like these, I think twice. That's right. You're the testament proof and birth certificate. Yes, you're the women in our lives. Thanks for listening. You are my love. You are my life. You are my time. You are my love. It would be such a struggle without you. Couldn't imagine how I would ever make it through. The beauty that you bring to our lives is so true. That's why we appreciate you. You are our women. It would be such a struggle without you. Couldn't imagine how I would ever make it through. The beauty that you bring to our lives is so true. That's why we appreciate you. Now, okay? Everything boils down to this. Mari mami, mari ben, apri chokri a bliss. Now everything that you gives us comes straight from the heart. Now apri pacha tamay kweba kut when heaven depart. You gave us birth, saw us rise from this earth from real dirt. Became my friend when I was younger. You turned into my lover, now you're my little kid's mother. You're the women in my lives. When I look into your eyes, I can never compare you to no one. Repeat that we got mad love for y'all. Keep it standing, never will we ever let you fall. Hand in hand, hot my hot, I pray not. Joy of other Niyahal, please I pray not. Because we love everything that you are and are not. And yes, you're the single love in life we got. Here are women, they will be such a struggle without you. Couldn't imagine how I would ever make it through. The beauty that you bring to our lives is so true. That's why we appreciate you. You are our women. It would be such a struggle without you. Couldn't imagine how I would ever make it through. The beauty that you bring to our lives is so true. That's why we appreciate you. You are our women. Bring to our lives. 
because it's so true. That's why we appreciate you. I think there's one very amazing spirit that we might get a chance to meet tomorrow, um, which is the founder of Unity of the Keys. And I forgot our sister, Reverend Evelyn. And from what I hear, she is just an amazing soul, amazing spirit. She's, how old is she now? No, they Ageless, ageless. And, and, uh, you know, great, great souls, I think, like that, that have this timeless age. It's just amazing, the seeds she's planted in this community and what she's allowed to unfold in her presence and her spirit. So just thinking of her as, as singing that song. Um, I wanted to... Oh, yeah. You guys remember this place? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our home. Our beautiful home. This, I feel, was so amazing to see. As, and then what was even more amazing when I read this. On October 17, 2000, Mayor Jimmy Weekly and the entire Key West City Commission voted unanimously to proclaim one human family the official philosophy of Key West. That's, that's amazing. Since then, it's also been adopted by Monroe County, Florida, and the country public and other people around the world. Um, His name is Pancho, and Pancho always carries the planet Earth flag around wherever he's at. It's a powerful message, just as, as we share with this sticker and this motto that we have here. And Pancho, was, he grew up and was born and raised in Mexico City and moved to UC Berkeley um, to do his PhD in astrophysics. Really intelligent soul. And when he started hearing that a lot of his research was being used by the government, and Berkeley uh, for nuclear war research, nuclear war development research. He actually quit his PhD at Berkeley and was left without a visa anymore as a student visa he, that, that, that he had. And in that process, he felt a calling to serve locally in that space that he was already kind of part of in the East Bay area. So quickly he comes up with a vision that he wants to start a home Casa de Paz, House of Peace. And as he envisions, somebody donates their home to him in the middle of East Oakland, in a town called Fruitvale, which is a very, it's a very gang-ridden part of East Oakland, um, but that's what he wanted. He wanted to bring light toward the space that was most dark. And so he starts this amazing experiment called Casa de Paz. And in front of, you know, in this um, East Oakland neighborhood where gunshots are heard quite often, uh, police sirens every, you know, few hours, he hosts his planet Earth flag in the front, says Casa de Paz outside, and creates a community home. And few rules that he has in his home is you never lock the door. And you can probably imagine, in East Oakland, it's a very rare thing. Here, I feel like, you feel, we feel, I think we can feel comfortable enough not to lock it. But there, unheard of. Don't lock the door and take your shoes off before you enter Casa de Paz. These are the two rules. Everyone's invited, anybody that wants to come. And every Friday, he holds a community gathering, one hour of silence, 
one hour of sharing, and then a dinner that's humbly offered as a gift to the community, whoever comes. Every Sunday, he offers fruits and vegetables to the community. And so what happened is all the neighbors surrounding his home broke down their walls, and they allowed them to build their own garden called the Canticle Garden. Organic gardening, they create fruits and vegetables through just nurturing and cultivating the land. And from that, they gift it to the community. That fruit that gift them, they just offer it as a gift to build camaraderie in the neighborhood. Whenever sirens go out or there's any gang violence, always there to serve, to be a bridge between gang members and the police. And Truly living this idea that, you know, we are a family. And how do we serve in those spaces? When the Occupy movement was happening, Pancho's reaction was, while every, and thousands of people are protesting in front of them right now, Pancho's response was, I want to go pray. Prayer is better than yelling. And he goes with this planet Earth flag, Brother Adelijah on the left. They get there and they sit there all night praying, meditating. And the next morning, Pancho gets arrested. The hilarious thing, we, we all still laugh about it, sad and still funny. On the reason for arrest, it says disturbing the peace. <laughs> this was, you know, this actually photo became very viral. Pancho is a big follower of Mahatma Gandhi's values of nonviolence. So he, he also practices this one practice that Mahatma Gandhi used to practice, which is silent on Mondays. And when they were there Sunday night and got arrested on Monday morning, he was taking a vow of silence, so he wasn't talking to the police. But he had a chance to write to them. And I remember his story, he was sharing that when he got into prison, the first thing he did was ask for a pencil and paper and writes to the police and the warden saying, I love you. And I know you guys are just doing the job that you need to do. But I still love you. And when I get out of jail, I would love to take you out for lunch, if possible. And, and there's, no, there's no element of him trying to be funny or anything. He's just, you know, directing love energy where he feels it's needed. And this is his response to what some may have called him his enemy. No, nope, for him, he understands. He's very compassionate for their role in society, but he's also playing his role. And it's just amazing, because he knew he could have easily been deported if he got arrested, but he still did what he did. And it's been five, six years, the court keeps delaying it. They know that he's a special soul that's needed in this community, and they don't send him back. And it's just amazing to see a brother that truly lives the spirit of oneness. You know, everyone to him is his brother and sister. And I actually feel that so much here in Key West, this week, for my brother Neil and I, we just feel the blessings of that spirit here. Everyone we talk to, whether tourist or resident, has that feeling of just welcomeness and, you know, hey, how are you doing? And where are you from? And great, this is what I do. Very seamless. And I just feel so blessed and so happy for our community here to have that spirit. And may that spirit continue to flourish around the world. And then, like, like, you, like you guys have started this movement of we are all one human family. And to see that spread, I think it's very possible that big things happen from small spaces with some small but beautiful intention. And I think we see that here. So I just want to thank you all for being a part of this spirit. Um, I think it's, it's powerful to see this see examples of this around the world, especially now when we see a lot of um, you know, duality in that sense. But here, we are doing our part. And I think Unity Church provides that same spirit that really allows us to see the world as our family. So I wanted to share a song called Keep Loving. It was inspired by me, uh, it's inspired, by, inspired in me by the message of nonviolence. And I was trying to understand what does nonviolence actually mean? And being in the Gandhi ashram where I've been at over the last seven years or so, 
it's been quite interesting to try to process when Mahatma Gandhi said nonviolence, why didn't he just say love? You know, what's what's the difference between, you know, why not be more positive about it? And what I realized for myself was that actually nonviolence is so important because to create a nonviolent mind is is the first process to walking towards love. And what I mean by that is I find myself, for example, judging a lot in my life journey. And until I started processing that, wow, until I stopped judging, my mind has no room or capacity to actually love openly. And so to me, when I wrote this song, it was really about this expression of how do I actually start practicing that first? I don't want to judge others. I don't want to judge myself and accept and embrace everyone and everything and every situation. And so keep loving, the chorus goes, keep loving, it'll change your heart, it'll change your mind, and then you'll start to change your eyes. Everything you touch, everyone you see, will soon become your family. So keep loving. And it's a, I know it's a process that we have to go through. We've got to keep working. And when we fall down, and when I do judge somebody, or if my anger comes up, I know i got to keep working on it. But that's the process, I feel. So keep loving. So that's the song I want to share.
Yeah? No? It says justification for a higher education. And then it has a beautiful <laughs> symbol. Yeah, right. <laughs> this was in Miss Nolte's class. But I remember this being a real huge inspiration for me, actually, at the time. Um, knowing that I wanted to get a really good education, and I wanted to have this. To me, this is what, at, at that time, what I felt success was meaning to me. Um, and I love that. I love that at every point in our life, we have a chance to ask ourselves, what does it mean to live a fulfilling life? Or what does it mean to live a successful life? And here's another picture. Actually, it's very similar in a sense. Here's a young man named Siddhartha Gautama. A lot of people know him as Buddha. Who had all of that stuff and decided, that's not for me. I want to go out and serve people and help people realize their best potential. And he loses all that and has just a loincloth and is now begging for his own food. And he considers himself successful in that sense that he's fulfilled in that way of living. And what I love about both examples is that none of them is right or wrong. I like this small little quote. It says, create a life that feels good on the inside, not that just looks good on the outside. And this idea that it doesn't matter where we are in terms of what we have or what we are doing, most important is are we asking ourselves, how do I feel inside? Am I doing whatever it is that makes me feel good? Am I not hurting anyone? Yes, first of all. But then whatever I'm doing, does it make me feel fulfilled? Does it give me a sense of completion? If I left today, could I say, that's, that's been a good journey. It's been a blessed journey. I feel very blessed. Because we don't know when we're heading up. You know? And I think this idea of really taking that time, whether it's once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year, to reflect and think about, hey, how do I feel about the way I'm living? And do I need to do anything to change that? What can I do? What are the steps that I can take? I think are so important. So there's this song to me that connects to this called Graduation that I wanted to share. And the song is not about graduating from school, but to me what it means to graduate from life. And I feel like we all have the capacity to graduate earlier so that we can start living more fulfilling lives longer. And so that's kind of the, the message. But I would love for all of us to sing together. Would you guys be okay singing together? So I'm going to go through the words, and we're going to kind of, this is kind of like choir school, choir class. Okay, the words and the melody are like this. We move on. As time passes by, let's just hope we move from darkness to light. When we reach the top and we look back, I hope you cry, filled with tears of joy, satisfied. How about that? Can we do that? Yeah. I think we can. We'll do it a couple times, and then we'll do it with yeah. music. OK, here we go. We move on as time passes by. Let's just hope we move from darkness to light. When we reach the top and we look back, I hope you cry, filled with tears of joy, satisfied. Awesome. I think we got it. Cool. All right, so this song is called Graduation. Impacted each day. Have your eye on the 
sky, but still see the ants for the small things of the foundation of all oh, that will last. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, maybe at least one area. That's too big. 
They're smaller than that. <laughs> yeah, they're really small. And so when, when I got there, the amazing thing was this, is that I arrived there and all this chaos. The first thing we do, we arrive to Vishal's family. And mom gives me a hug. She's not crying. She's not yelling. The first thing she asked me, she says, Hamish, sir, what do you want to drink? Can I get you chai, coffee, or cold drinks? Soda, they call cold, soda cold drinks. There. The first thing she says to me are these words. And I was just, I was really taken back. How does she have the capacity to offer me something in the midst of some of you know, the greatest, probably darkness in their lives that, that they faced? in not having a home. And I started kind of laughing. I was just like, are you kidding me? You're asking me this right now? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll go get it for you. And it was then that struck me that that story never left me this one, this message that I have no room to ever complain in my life. And here in this space and time, this challenging space and time for them, first thing they could think of is, what can I offer you? And so they gifted me something really important, which was this sign to always remember to be grateful for everything I have. And I know I don't, I'm not always in that space, but I thank God and I thank them for being that reminder to me of all the blessings that I have. And I think it's important. All of us have various teachers or symbols or signs that remind us to be grateful. And we all have gone on such unique journeys, each and every one of us, that have led us to being here today, that have led us to living in the way we are. And I know gratitude is probably an important virtue in all of our hearts, to be grateful for all the lessons we have. So I actually wanted to open up this moment in time for all of us, whoever feels like sharing, um, anything that you're grateful for in your life. And personally, I find it very enriching when I hear from the, from the hearts of others what they're feeling gratitude for in their phase in life, in their journey, what has been the pillars of strength or the blessings they've been receiving. So what I would love for us to do is, whoever would like to, yes, just raise your hand. I'm obviously grateful that you're here, that you came all this way to share this. Well, thank you. Please share your name and then whatever in your life that you're grateful for. And speak loud because I don't think back there they're going to be able to hear. For you, we can have the microphone, but maybe not for everyone. My name is Rocky and I'm grateful for that Nemo visited so many schools and taught us things that I never knew anyone could teach us. Thank <laughs> you. 
Beverly Allen, and every morning I take my walk by the beach and look out at the water and look up at the blue sky. And I just thank God for living in such a wonderful, loving, giving community where you can be who you are. And you're sad. so much life back to this community and we deserve it and we are enjoying it and thank you all for so much. Huge influence 
on my son and myself. I have an 11 year old and a single mom. And I can't ever thank him for how amazing his lessons and his friendship have been in our lives. So thank you. Say one more time, buddy, just to make sure it's very clear. It says, gratitude, gratitude bestows reverence, allowing us to encounter everyday epiphanies, those transcendent moments of awe that change forever how we experience life in the world. And I feel like when we're living from this lens a little more every day, and we do see magic happening in front of us, and magic could be as simple as and beautiful as the ocean water. It could be the pain or suffering that we're going through that day. It could be anything, but if we're able to use that lens a little more, then I just feel like we can increase the magic, magic that's happening in our day. And to be a human being on this planet is a quite magical experience, you know, floating on this ball in the middle of outer space. Somehow it's not falling down or we're not flying away. And there's a lot of magical things going on that we shouldn't take for granted, probably. Um, but things that probably don't happen anywhere else, exactly. So I think it's just important. I'm glad we had a chance to share some of that together. I wanted to share um, one last song together. Um, and I'd love for all of us to sing together. And this chorus is pretty simple. It says, all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be. It's a blessing, it's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all. And I thank you once again for reaching out and just allowing for this all to unfold for us to be here with your family. Very grateful and deep gratitude for the entire community here. Thank you. Feel free to Get up a little if you feel like moving in, dancing, shaking. Thank you all for having me here tonight. Thank you for your presence um, and for sharing your time and space with all of us today.
what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine. How do I get back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it? Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone. Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan. Wherever we are. 